Hey, what's happening, everybody? Welcome to this episode of Press Start TV. Yeah. My name's Will. This is Mr. Nine. Yep. This is Mr. Gage. Hi. Once on again, it. we have so many things to go over with you today. I'm on uh, every camera this week. What's that? I'm on every camera this week. Congratulations. <laughs> Not on that camera. We're going to talk about oh. some, uh, some Call <laughs> of Duty. Uh, we're going to talk about the, the price game. of new games that are coming out. And, of course, we'll talk about some more news. So let's start off with that. Uh, Phil Spencer is trying to focus on just first-party games and spending less yes. time on third-party games. Right. Which means less exclusive third-party deals. Oh. Or, or does that mean Sony goes out and tries to undermine Xbox? Like, well, we'll, we'll, we'll grab all the third-party stuff. That, that'll be our thing now. Not a bad, not a bad strategy. Not, it's not a bad strategy, it's but for gamers, strategy. gamers hate. I hate it's, it. I like, we got the Tomb Raider it. situation we're going through right Absolutely. now. Yeah, we talked about that. Exclusive yeah. deals. But, I mean, and then now it looks like, you know, Sony has the new Call of Duty deal. I mean, they've already got the deal with Activision for Destiny. Sure. They've... I'm pretty sure they'll cut the deal with Activision for Call of Duty. Well, I think they have because they're getting do, the do beta you first. These guys? I mean, they're trying to separate their console. I think, I think I mean, consoles are separate enough with the first party games on both consoles. I don't know that we need this kind of exclusivity. are different across both consoles. Yeah. And you have the hardcore fans for both. Like, just they're right. extreme. And I think the first party developers are doing just a fine job. I don't know that we need third party developers going like, you know what, we're just gonna, we're gonna take this we're huge deal from Xbox, we're gonna stay over there, and look how Titanfall got affected by it. Look how many people want uh, Sunset Overdrive on their PlayStation. It's and good, it's a good point. Insomniac already yeah. said that it's not gonna happen. Yeah, they're not doing it. Which upsets me. Which, which missed the whole window, because that was an awesome game. Sorry, Sony. I mean, uh, but if I'm the if I'm the publisher, or or if I'm Microsoft or Sony or even Nintendo, do, I I want <laughs> Nintendo's to, giving up a third. Well, you price. know, the NX could be a huge thing. Could Just be. Say we don't know yet. We don't know. Uh, but you oh, know, really? if, if I'm them, <laughs> I, I yeah, I want exclusive titles on my console. Well, yeah, I, but if Phil Spencer, Phil Spencer's a games guy. Yeah. This I is like first-party titles. Being exclusive, that's understandable. Yeah, yeah it's first made by companies that are owned by those by those system manufacturers. Right. Third-party titles should no way ever be console exclusive. Okay, so okay, you're limiting that's, your fan base. You know, Nine. That's a, hard, that's a good argument. You're Insomniac right now, and I'm Microsoft. Here's fifteen million dollars just to make sure your game's on my console. Here's twenty-five million. It doesn't matter if the game doesn't sell. Take it. Not <laughs> Fine, you sold me. In my opinion, I would want my game to reach as many hands as possible. Sure, absolutely. Because you're going to ultimately make more money that way. In, in theory, in if, theory your game, if your game tanks, what you about it? Yeah, you know because if you've taken the time to develop the code and produce the game, I mean, it's not that. I don't. I'm not a developer, so don't listen to me. I would assume it's very difficult to to port over. But you have the store. You have a lot of the general things done already. Well, and the other thing is, if X say Xbox buys that exclusivity rights, they're going to help you with their marketing. You're going to sell way more ex uh, copies with an exclusivity thing because of the marketing Xbox is giving you. Right? Sony's you can't do your own marketing, marketing that well. Too. Yeah. Sony's going to give marketing. Look, well, I'm saying that Xbox is just for crying out. Well, that's just the example. Huge. Crap. That's just the example. It could be, you go. It could go either way. I'm just saying that's why people go exclusive, right? I just wish that wouldn't be a thing. I Especially pre-order exclusive stuff. I hate it. I do hate feel it. like the, the, the differences between the consoles are becoming less and less apparent. Like, you know, as you mentioned, the hardcore fans for Microsoft love Microsoft because of other things, like the controller. And, you know, yes. that's, that's a big deal between the consoles. Yep. You know, it used to be the Blu-ray player against the non-Blu-ray player back in the PS3, 360 days. But now, I mean, they do a lot of the same stuff. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're pretty... So the Similar. only thing that really separates these consoles hardware. are the exclusive titles, I think. But if we want to stick stick the first party, then yeah, <laughs> that's my, that's my argument. Right. First party, first party. party. TV. My name's Will. This is Nine. This is Gage. Yep. Wait, we're, we're still here. We're so, still talking. So <laughs> arguing so, more. So, I, I, mean, I think we're on the same page. We're just arguing the same point. So third party are we, are we, exclusive are we, titles, are we, in your opinion, should be completely gone. Only exclusive titles should be first party. Like. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Are you on board with us too? Yeah, absolutely. Now, I don't want to see. I you will I'd... say. I will say in 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 the indie van, in the, the word vomit. Goodness gracious, in the indie area, sure. Where Sony could give them or Microsoft could give them a boost because indie developers have like zero budget. Yeah, but if someone wants to back them, you know. But I mean, if Microsoft or Sony wants to, like Cuphead's a great example. Microsoft yeah. got Cuphead. Sony got No Man's Sky. I mean. Those are great games. Two great games <laughs> that wouldn't be exist, like they couldn't possibly exist if neither one of those companies gave them the money. They're not going to live as well alone. Now they could have gone alone. to Kickstarter, but Kickstarter and crowdfunding sites are unreliable. Sure. Yeah. Shenmue you, is a good 
good case in point in there. It failed once. And yeah. Now it's got three times what it needed. Show up at E3. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's an, you're, again, it's a good argument because those are very interesting. That's the only situation ideas. I see that exclusivity would be acceptable. Yeah, but I, I, I honestly feel bad for people who right. own a PS4 who can't Activision play Tomb Raider for a year. Activision money from Sony. Right. Yeah. Or, or if it was vice versa. Or vice versa. If I, if I only had a PlayStation and couldn't get Tomb Raider for a whole year, I'd be oh, like, I'm Square, so what are you that. doing? So mad. I didn't buy Especially the PlayStation. Especially how Sony is the one that gave Square Tomb Raider to begin with. Sure. But like I don't want to oh, buy I don't want to buy a huge console, spend all this money, and I can't play a game that should be on both consoles. <laughs> like it's it a third-party like, game. I understand I can't play Halo if I got my PlayStation, but if I can't play Tomb Raider or God of War because you, know, you have an Xbox. You know, as I'm sitting here thinking about this more, I, I, I I'm in agreement. I mean, because if I most people, I shouldn't say that. A lot of gamers are going <laughs> to buy both consoles anyway. I, I mean, we're I we're a special to. case. Yeah. Right. We play a lot of games. I know, but I, I'm just saying. I a still lot, only have the PlayStation Four. Though. Sure. I, I, but broke. but a lot of gamer for sure. But a lot of people <laughs> will go out both consoles though. And, and purchase both consoles because they want to play the games. Um, you love Uncharted. You love Halo. You're going to buy. You know whatever it is. But um, you know if if you decide to just play one console and you decide to do that, I mean, you shouldn't be penalized for that's making kind of what it feels choice. like, too. That's, yeah. that's exactly what it feels like. I'm being penalized because I have a PS4 and Square wants to put... I'm looked down upon. Actually, I own all the consoles, so it's not like you, the same for you me. You should realize your exclusive first-party <laughs> titles. That you, you, You're going to get those, yeah. right? But third party should should give the option to all games. That's to go to the Supreme Court. Make yeah, let's case. sue video games. <laughs> Are you in agreement with us? Let us know. Hit yeah, us absolutely. up with some comments, and, and we'd love to hear from you. Yes. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the price of games along with this right after this as when we get back. And we're back. <laughs> Welcome back. You're watching, listening to Press Start TV. My name is Will. This is Nine. Yeah, this is Gage. Why am I always last? You know, I'm just doing this. Okay. You know, you're not last, man. <laughs> Gage, we obviously love you. Yeah, you know? obviously. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm on the shirts this week, except for mine. <laughs> they didn't tell me. I almost told you. It would be a little weird wear, him wearing his own shirt. It wouldn't be weird. No? No. Okay. I'm just the moving version. Okay, so You're the, gift the price in which you pay for games isn't too much. I mean, back in the day, you used to pay $30 for games, and then it went up to $40, and then it went up to $50, and now it is $60. Um, it's kind of been $60 for a while Two generations now. now. Yeah. yeah. Cost of making games, man. Exactly. Uh, so, so that's the argument. Is sixty dollars too much for a brand new game? I blame AAA titles. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you blame yes. AAA titles. I blame AAA titles. The qu so, do because you think they, all game, all new games should be within not not like rare replays, a little different, you know, but new release titles? I think new IPs should be cheaper <laughs> because they don't have as big of a development team. Sure. From Destiny a, should be. Do you want to say the order? <laughs> Do you want to say it? Why? Because I'll say it. No. The order should not I paid have 60 bucks for it, and I feel like I should have paid 30 bucks. I thought it was a good experience. I, I thought it was a fun game. Yeah. I good. enjoyed it. Why well, am I always alone Was it worth 60 bucks? I need. Probably not. I'm taking applications for someone to be on my side. <laughs> you know. <laughs> right in now. It's a very small list, Gage. That's, yeah. a, that's a different story. We <laughs> talked about that. It, and it was a shorter game, but it was different and new. Um, it was super pretty. Yeah. It didn't feel different and new. It was more cinematic. I mean, yeah. you had you. It was. Man, you're gonna have a hard time with Uncharted. More focused on. I don't think so. That's a well balanced. It's more. Game. Isn't Uncharted like big set pieces and like quick time events and stuff? No, hardly any. It's quick a. Time it's events. a combination of all games, and it's very well balanced. Okay. Um, Not paying sixty bucks. For Uncharted. You should definitely is, pay sixty bucks for that game. <laughs> yeah, Uncharted that's Four a $60 is gonna be. Game. That is a sixty dollar game. <laughs> Last well, yeah, sixty dollar. Let's game. get back to the conversation. Sure. So, um, it, it, but you're, you're saying new IPs reason, shouldn't be 60 The reason why it hit $60 is because AAA developers that have made all these games through reputation were starting to be like, hey, this is costing us more money to make because we keep hiring more and more people. Well, they have a process. Development series. Yeah, our teams are getting bigger. They, yeah, exactly. So, they, you know, through demand, they needed more money per game. So. Does on $10, a four-man team $10. like Hello Games need to release a $60 game? No. Because those guys are going to be filthy, stinking rich when No Man's Sky comes out. I, I, no, they, they don't. But, but um, you know, not just... 
I mean, if you have a, a fan base and you're releasing another Halo game and another Battlefield game, yeah, you know, yeah, sure. And especially titles like Insomniac, who got X number of dollars from Microsoft to make the game only for Xbox. They've already made money on the game. Yeah. But gamers want the best. Gamers want a, I want the a best phenomenal possible. game. So much so that you know the mm -hmm. ongoing joke of release uh, date getting pushed back. Every g hardcore gamer is on understanding of that's what happens, it's right? It's issue. just what happens. If it's it never sticks to three, don't expect it this year. And, and, and what do they With say? With the exception of Fallout 4. 90, I'm making up a statistic here, but 90% of gamers, uh, they say 90% of football is half mental. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thanks John Madden. 90% of gamers will like, hey, that's okay, I just want the game to be the best it can be. I agree. I know. I, I, so, don't, care. I don't mind waiting for games. Like, I have no problem waiting for the games so, to come out. So the development that goes into putting out the game that you want, which is the best it can be, costs money to do that. I mean, if you're going to complain on release day that you bought a game and beat it in a week and it wasn't long enough and you paid 60 bucks for it, don't buy it the day it comes out. Wait yeah. four days, see what people are saying about it, and then make your decision well, if you want to buy it. You know, sixty percent of a hundred dollars, pretty much. Right. Is a little high. It's a lot to pay for a game. Because when you think but about it, I pay it, it all the time. Yeah, because you consoles are four hundred dollars. Yeah. You buy five games, that's three hundred dollars. It's like a buying, you that, know. I mean, Especially when I bought my Xbox One for the first time, it didn't come with a game. By the way, you're right. watching Fresh Start TV. My name's Will. This is Nine. Yep. This is Gage. We're talking Still about here. the price of a new game. Um, once again, uh, I, I think that if the game's worth it, it's worth it. If it's if it's not, some of the and that's remakes, the thing. That's Madden the thing that's to decide about because you have to de you decide yourself if the game's worth it or not. You can't don't listen to other yeah, people. I mean, also, that's also a very good point. Right. But you if, set the value of things based on how much you enjoyed the experience. Sure. I, well, I mean, it should be based off of how much um, the development team put into it. Like if they only put in, you know, how much does it cost to make a game? There's a lot of people that get paid for that. <laughs> Depends like, on the size of the development team. The, the, there's that's the true. marketing people. There's the distributor. There's the publisher. There's you know all the people that worked on it. There's the retailer. You know there, there's a the lot of making coffee runs. The, there's a lot of yeah, the there's the marketing. You know yeah. the, there's the a lot of different pieces that come out of that but sixty bucks. Take mm -hmm. something like Battlefront, which is being developed by Dice, sure. who is a massive development team, sure. like yeah. 150, 200 people probably working on one title. Yeah. Versus. Hello Games, which is at 12 people making a massive title, which is getting an extreme amount of hype. Both of those games are going to make a ton of money. Yeah. No Man's Sky is going to come out way better than Because Battle these, these guys have uh, like a talented it, crew that have over, dreams, that put, put, the, put out a great product, started out as a, a, a very small, low-budget indie title, oh, and yeah. blossomed into this huge thing. DICE was tasked with taking one of the number one brands in the world. And and don't mess up and, Star Wars, and, and please. Don't mess it up. <laughs> right, exactly. Don't mess it up like Again. previous guys. <laughs> George Lucas. So well, I'm calling here. So we are, 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 are. Is sixty dollars good for some games, not good for others? Is, is it you know when I when I play person? a game like Batman Arkham Knight, and I have a great experience. Totally worth 60 uh, when I play a game like MLB The Show, and I have a great experience. Paying sixty bucks, no problem. You you feel like you got your money's worth. When I play The Order, not so much. <laughs> it's a, it's a, you know, and it's a different game. And your opinion, but uh, yeah, again, it's, and that's what the perception is. Too. Yeah, but it's yeah. a good argument. Yeah. I mean, and some sometimes you, you feel like you don't get your money's worth, and that's when you feel a little jaded. Yeah, a little bit. But then they get all, if you trade it in fast enough, you get a little bit back. You know, you can put it towards your next game, kind of thing. I'll say this is my closing statement. I will not pay seventy dollars for a brand new game. No, if it goes up to seventy, we're gonna have seventy dollars. I'm done buying a new game. You, I don't know that we're gonna story. see that jump though. So, yeah. Unless it, it comes with a bunch of DLC It almost stuff. happened with this generation. <laughs> I know. I remember the rumor. Through fan feedback and community outlash, it did not happen. Well, anyway. All right, well, when we get back, we're going to talk about Call of Duty right after this. <gasps> Hey everybody, welcome back. We just got done talking about the price of games, and now we're going to be talking about Call of Duty games. So, uh, once again, you're watching and listening to Press Start TV. My name's Will. This is Gabe. Hey, I'm second this time. And this is Nine. I'm last. All right, so. so bad. Doesn't it suck? Yeah. So, <laughs> Call of Duty. All the time. What'd you guys stop talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Call of Duty games are, are, are uh, obviously have been coming out left and right, left and right. Two different companies making it. There's three the Treyarch different line, companies. three different companies. You got Sledgehammer, you got Treyarch, you got Infinity Ward. All these companies uh, producing some good, some bad. <laughs> Let's talk about uh, Call of Duty as a whole. Our first question is. Are we burnt out on Call of Duty games? No, 
No? Not really. Yeah, I, I get that. I mean, when it comes back around, you're like, oh, another Call of Duty game's coming out this year. And, like, I always pick it up. I always buy it. I usually enjoy my time with it. I don't feel burnt out We talked all. about this last week. We talked about Mario games. Yeah. I mean, the, the, one of the points I made was Nintendo always seems to wait to reinvent Mario. I think they're doing that with Call of Duty games. I think bringing Sledgehammer in and giving everybody a three-year cycle versus a two-year cycle is really going to... Because they have new ideas. They got everybody. They, they, know, they have things they want to do. Each developer has a unique take on, yeah, it's true. on Call of Duty. Way more time to polish, too. Way. We talked to the guys at, who are working on Black Ops 3. They said this is the furthest they've ever been along development before release. Right. Yeah. I mean, it was the first year they ever had Call of Duty playable, playable at E3. At E3. They're, they're fo they did a lot of focus uh, for eSports, for uh, competitive gaming, yep. which was great. They're thinking about all um, aspects. And, and once again, a lot of people love the Treyarch series because of zombies. Zombies. Uh, uh, World of War was fantastic. Okay. Probably my favorite zombies iteration. So let's talk about worst Call of Duty games. Modern Warfare series. Really? Yeah. Man, when Modern Warfare 4 came out, that was like a not, freaking not bomb just, on gaming. It was huge. Yeah, it was awesome. I mean, amazing. Modern Warfare and Modern Warfare 2 were good games. They were great they games. Were great but the games. series as a whole doesn't feel that different. It's the most washed out of the series. I don't know. I think Modern Warfare 4 reinvented Call of Duty to a whole new level. Yeah. And I mean, Modern Warfare 2 was awesome. Level. Modern Warfare 3 got a little shaky in there. Yeah. But I still like the then multiplayer. They made ghosts. It, was, it was good. But yeah, then there's that. that don't spoil I, I, my answer. I am counting ghosts in that series because it yeah, but is see, from 1, the 2, and 3. Well, I don't allow Pretty that. solid. All right. So, I uh, that. The meshing? <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you have a worst Call of Duty game in your opinion? 3. Modern Warfare 3. 3. Hands yeah. down. I didn't play Ghost because I heard it was so bad, so I can't give an honest opinion about that. <laughs> so I'm going with Modern Warfare 3. Terrible game. Okay. Story was just blah. The gameplay was just It was a little convoluted. Blah. My problem with the Modern Warfare games is when they had that big shock in the first one, the second one tries to be bigger than that one, and the third one tried to be bigger than that one. didn't work out. They don't work out. The second one was pretty good, though. The first one and the second one had almost identical endings. They all had identical endings. So did Ghosts. It was the same ending. It, 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 yeah. The, I mean, in terms of the way it was executed and everything, too. Yeah, like, same mechanic. Throw a knife. That's it. whoop de doo They introduced some new gameplay mechanics with the campaign, but uh, you know, a lot of the focus was multiplayer, of course. And that yeah. really didn't change all that much, either. They added Spec Ops lot. to Modern Warfare 2, I believe, is the one that came in. Yeah, Modern Warfare 2 was a great game, yeah. Okay, well, Gage, let's talk about uh, your opinion for worst game. Uh, worst one, I'll make it easy. It's just Ghosts. Yeah. Yeah. Any, any particular reason why? Or? Uh, I didn't enjoy it like the other ones. I didn't think the story was that strong. The multiplayer seemed kind of iffy. I didn't really like what it was going I with bet, that community. Like, the multiplayer was like broken too. It, was, it, it wasn't broken. It just was. It just wasn't all there. There was something missing about it. And you couldn't. I can't put my finger on it, but it was just like it wasn't great. Yeah. I, I, you know, I'm. I'm gonna have to agree with you. I, I was gonna say finest hour, but. Um, Ooh, oh, I forgot hour. about Finest Hour. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't the best, in my opinion. Ooh. But I think Ghost I was... about all the PS2s. Uh, there was something lacking there. It's like yeah. it didn't have substance or something. It was, it was an, like an empty game. It was yeah. very weird. It's like you were running around doing Call of Duty stuff, but like something was just yeah. you know, missing. It's like a simulator. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Um, okay, uh, so moving on from that, best Call of Duty games. I'll start with you. Uh, I think the best one is either... Black Ops 2 or yeah. Modern Warfare, the Ooh, first one. So Call of Duty choices. 4 or Modern Warfare, yeah. By the way, you're watching Press Start TV. Uh, my name's Will, this is Nine, this is yep. Gage. Still playing with my hair. Um, yeah, you know, those are two tough choices. <laughs> that, I, I thought you they were both great, one. very full Could, games. Yeah, sure. Could very, you pick one? Uh, if I had to pick one, I think I might, I'd probably spend more time in Black Ops 2. So probably Black Ops 2. Fair enough. I love yeah. Black Ops 1, by the way, Although just up there at Black Ops 2. Yeah. What do you got, Will? No, well, for me, uh, you know, <laughs> wow. so... Cut them off. Ha! Got there first. I, Shocker. I, I actually... I would throw Modern Warfare 2 in that mix as well. I thought the first one, the second one, and Black Ops 2 were great. Um, but once again, I am in agreement with you. I think Black Ops 2 had a little bit more to offer. But I, f I do feel that Modern Warfare 1 was a more important game. Yes, it shaped Call of Duty yeah, forever. It shaped Absolutely. the way Call of Duty went. It changed everything from that like World it War II the stuff to. Entirely. <laughs> um, Nine. Me? Nine. Oh, my what turn. do you got? My turn. Yeah. My turn. Best Call uh, of Duty game. My, my best Call of Duty game, I'm, I'm kind of split between the very first Call of Duty yeah. and Black Ops 1. 
Okay. Because I loved the story in Black Ops 1. It was awesome, that altered history stuff. Fantastic stuff. The JFK stuff, mm -hmm. the numbers, the whole thing. Was just <laughs> the so numbers, cool. Mason! What do they mean? And the fact that the interactive, like, start menu was just so cool. Oh, yeah, sure. You know? But I, if I had to edge it out to one of them, I'd have to say the first Call of Duty game. Wasn't that Finest Hour? The PC would just Call of Duty, is oh. I think is what it was called. Okay. If it was called Finest Hour, I don't. I think that was the PS2 port. Yeah, that was on PS2, yeah. Uh, the PC version was the first one that came out. Um, and I only give it to that one because it made me feel, I, it came out while I was in college. Sure. And it brought back local LAN party co-op. Cool. For me, which was, it, it made me feel like I was playing Goldeneye again with all these PCs and rigs nice. set up in my friend's dorm rooms. And we were just drinking, you know, <laughs> all night long and just playing games. It was awesome. That's always a good thing it as was, far as uh, yeah, having you know? good good the, times the, like that for sure. I love getting together and playing games. Um, and uh, also, Black Ops 3, I'm sure we'll have a lot to offer. Oh, I know Black, Black Ops is all in our radar. Real but, quick uh, before we get out of here, sure. did you kill anybody in the no Russian level? Let's not talk about we'll that. We'll talk about that later <laughs> on Checkpoint. Uh, by the way, you can check Fine. us out on YouTube.com slash PSVGTV. Drink my uh, Twitch.tv slash press underscore start underscore TV. That's all the time we have for you today. Thank you so much for joining us. Until next time. Bye. See you later. Bye.